Hello, welcome back to Low Foot TV. We are back on my GT86 today, following on from the last video where we switched out the radiator and fan shroud for the mission motor ones. We are now removing the aircon. Yeah, so um, we couldn't fit the aircon air rad back in basically because there was an oil cooler and an engine cooler in front of it. Um, if you had a naturally aspirated one, it'd be absolutely fine, but um, there just wasn't enough space behind the bumper to fit it properly so plus it hasn't worked for a fight yeah um, and we we thought if we do try and get it working it's probably the seals are probably dried up in it now it's probably just going to leak so um, we're going to dish the aircon um, and get rid of it yeah because brakes can so the aircon pump is here on the right side of the engine as you're looking at it obviously my turbo is in the way there so first thing i'm going to do is just pull my air filter off give us a bit of working room and what we're going to do is replace the aircon pump with this bracket which has come from oh, a company. I'll put the link <laughs> in the description. And on that will be a replacement pulley, which will sit in the same place as the current one so that the, the belt length is the same, so that it's everything works as it should. Yeah, the, re the reason you can't just get a short belt is because there's actually a pulley below. So if, if once that pulley's out, it can't run that way because there's a, there's a pulley running in the opposite direction. So you can't just put a short belt on, belt on it, which is why we have to replace the air pump with another pulley so that the belt can still run in the same way it's meant to. So today we're gonna to be taking off everything that is in the engine bay, basically. I'm not gonna faff around behind the dash because that would involve taking the dash out and I'm, just, I'm not doing that. Um, and the heater matrix itself is part of it as well, which still works. So I've still got heating, it's just the air pump that's coming out. So it'll be the air pump, pump, it'll be this large pipe here, and then there's just the return pipe which went into the AC condenser as well. Um, there's already a pipe that's come off with the radiator, so that's what we'll be taking off today. So to start off with, nice easy part, we've just got the little cover on top here, which is held on with two 10mm bolts, and that's literally just a dust cover. And it's not held on very tightly at all, so it comes off nice and easy. And then attached to that is just a couple of little electrical bits. So all you have to do is crimp one connector there, just to release that cable tie, and then the same at the back there for the smaller one, which I will get my pliers and do now. So if you do the, the larger of the two, which is just next to the intake pipe first, that will allow you to flip the cover over and access the little one at the bottom there for, for this one. Needle nose pliers would probably be better, but... There we go, that's off. So chuck that to one side just for now. So next bit, we'll take this pipe off, which is just a 10 mil bolt in the top. Uh, that literally just comes out and then the pipe should pull out. It'll have a rubber seal around it, so it'll be a little bit tight coming out, but it should just pull upwards. Yeah, there you go. And then that is, that, that pipe runs back to here. There's another 10 mil on the bulkhead, which clamps in both pipes. So it clamps this main pipe and then the small pipe as well. Um, so if you just undo. It's a little bit awkward to get into with that strut bar in the way. But. Unless it's also bolted on the other side. No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, just so the big pipe just pulls backwards and it's basically got a clamp that holds the small pipe in too. So that just pulls that way and then it all comes out. So that is the big pipe off the top. The small pipe as well is just on a little rubber grommet to the same, same mounting plinth, if you like. So just with a little tug there, it just pops right out. And then it's just on a series of little clamps along the engine bay. So just disconnect it from all of them. And then there is also one electrical sensor which you just need to disconnect as well, which is just here on the far side of the engine. And hopefully this doesn't throw any warning lights up at me when I'm driving. And then after that, it's just a case of unthreading it from the engine bay, really. Probably not a lot of chance of getting that out in one piece. No, while that you also can just bend it really. See if it's coming out anyway. It is only made of aluminium. So yeah, it does bend nice quite and easy. Sweet. So, got the pipes up. 
So far, this is going swimmingly. <laughs> Except now we've got to loosen off the belt. So that's probably where it stops going swimmingly. Right, so for the pump, there is, again, a little electrical connector that just needs to come out there. And we'll just tuck that out of the way because that's now redundant. And hopefully it doesn't get upset with me. Okay, so we've identified the ancillary belt tensioner as the little pulley that's just below the alternator one. So we'll just need to quickly whip off the cover on this side of the engine as well, just to access this lower pulley here, which will be the one that we loosen off to get the belt off. So now that gives us access to this bolt here, and we can then get the belt off. Okay, so the pulley in question isn't the one directly underneath the alternator as we first thought. It's conveniently tucked right behind the uh, the turbo pipe work, which makes things pleasant. So it is the second pulley down and it wants to go clockwise. So pulling it clockwise will push the tensioner out that way. So you can see when you pull it that way, all of the tension comes off the belt and then you should be able to pull it straight off. So that's off there. There's no, because we're not changing the belt, there's no point in us um, taking the whole the belt off completely. So we just took that over the turbo. And then it's just a case of taking this air pump out of the way now. It's going surprisingly well. I think we've gotten too used to jobs being shit for us. <laughs> Right, so to remove the aircon pump, it's three 14 mil bolts. There's two on the front side. So you can see how the bracket sits. Um, that, yeah, there's two, so that, that bracket's gonna go in like that. And basically there's two bolts underneath the pulley and then one right down the back of here in between the back of the aircon pump and the intake manifold. And so you, I think they fit 14? 14, yeah. Cool, so. Um, yeah, it's just those three bolts that should all lift out all the, all the electrical connectors disconnected. So Again, if you're naturally aspirated, you'll have a lot more room to work with. Uh, for the two front ones, I'm just having to use a short extension on my 3 8 ratchet, um, and then we'll need a longer one to get down to the back bolt. Other than that, pretty straightforward. If you don't have a turbo, you can probably <laughs> use a 20 inch. <laughs> yeah, you can do extension. what you like. If you don't have a turbo, get one. Yeah, so a little bit fiddly when you've got the big snail to work past, but it is now moving. And the good news is I get new bolts supplied with the kit, which is really handy, and they are Subaru genuine parts, so they're guaranteed to fit. <laughs> oh, that extra 10 kilos coming into play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the two front ones are out. Um, with the turbo, I had to use uh, one of them doohickeys that makes it angly and spinny at the same time. Technical <laughs> briefing there. Mechanic. <laughs> uh, but the two front ones are out now, so just the, the final back one to do, and it should be, should be straightforward. Just go straight down. Oh, thank you, that's very helpful. Into there. And let's see if I can't smash my knuckles while I'm doing this. That's just sublime. Oh, excellent. And that is one heavy air compound. Lots of nice new individually packaged genuine Subaru bolts. What I will do is in our new ritual, I'm going to copper grease all of these before they go in. I don't particularly see any reason to take them off in the future, but it's yeah. just helpful. They are, um, they, it's steel bolts going into an aluminium casting, so when they've not been off for a really long time, they just get really tight and seize up. So um, if you put the top grease on it, it means that you don't have that problem later on. That's it. Um, so yeah, that's the bracket going in. Um, that is the new pulley. Um, it's much lighter than the aircon pump that's come out. Yes. Um, It'd be it's, interesting to weigh it. Yeah. Yeah. Kilos, it's a good, maybe three or four kilos, I would have said. Yeah, so that should sit in there like that. Um, and then these two bits on here for the, so that you can put the plastic shroud back on too. Yeah. Just gonna do copper grease 
very lightly, just the surfaces that are going to be getting bolted on. And then I'll also grease the bolts themselves as well. Hey, it lines up, we're in business. So I'll just do it in reverse order that we took them out. So drop in the back one first. Okay, so all three bolts in loosely to start with. And then once they're all in place, we can get them tightened up. And because this new bracket's a lot less bulky than the, um, than the original pump, it's actually a lot easier to get in and work around, which is nice. We decided that it'd probably be a lot easier putting the pulley on afterwards, um, just to give us a bit more room so you're not like yes. working around the pulley. Um, and obviously you can't get it tight on the bracket anyway until it's in place, so um, yeah, it just makes life a lot easier. Yeah. There we go, nice and solid, and then I can proceed with putting the pulley on. There's no actual fitting instructions, is there? So. There might be, but there might be at home. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's useful. Yeah. Um, but basically, they give you this washer um, and it doesn't fit in one side, it only fits on this side. Um, so we're assuming that that's the way it goes in and then the washer goes on the outside. Yeah. Um, and it does line up when yeah. it's that way around. But the washer has to go a certain way for the bearing to move. You can see the recess on the, on the center of this washer. That has to go so that the bit sticking out faces down and that sits on the inner race of the the bearing and allows the bearing to turn even though it's bolted up because um, if you have it the other way then the face puts pressure on the outside of the bearing and, and it can't move anywhere yeah so we'll um we'll chuck it on that way and get the bolt on the bolt that is meant for the pulley has got a little taper on it um basically that fits in there so that the bearing can spin on the taper nice and freely so it's just a case getting the bolt somewhere near. Just check it before you put the bolt back on. One thing we have noticed is there is a slight bit of uh, lateral play with it. We are pretty much deciding not to worry about that because I've had a little play with this little bearing and that also has a slight bit of play. So I presume it's intended or it's, it's fine to have a little bit of play laterally with those bearings. So all we have to do now is re-thread the belt and then pop those covers back on and jump them. Yeah. That's on there. It should go over this top pulley a bit easier now because it's slightly thinner than the, the air compound pulley that came off. Um, so it should all thread on a little bit easier. Um, just make sure it's definitely all, on all the way around the crank pulley. Um, yeah, we seem pretty good there, so. All the other ones seem lined up. Slowly let the tension back on. <laughs> and you just lose it. your spanner until you miss. God damn it! Excellent, so that is job done. That's nice and tense. So all we have to do, two covers back on. Um, there is obviously a redundant connector there, but we can still reattach the clips to keep it in place. I'll probably just stick a little zip tie around there to keep that from flapping around too much, but it should be all right anyway. Uh, and then we can fire it up. Okay, so that's both covers back in place. Tuck that little electrical connector just down out of the way so it's not going to foul on the pulley. And that is the job done. The AC has been deleted. to delete the AC on a forced induction GT86 or BRZ. 
Hope you found it helpful. Um, it's been a learning curve for both of us because it's a pretty unique setup. Yeah, um, it was a very well made piece of kit actually. Like, yes, it's, yeah, um, and very reasonably priced as well. Yeah, so it was from Import Car Parts. Import Car Parts. We'll put the link in the description uh, for you to have a look at as well. Um, it was really fast as well. Uh, so they have an eBay store. Um, they only accept payment through PayPal, which is fine because it's quite secure. Um, and I had the parts within three days. So yeah, really impressed with the service from them. So thank you very much. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you soon.